Uh, but interestingly, in the post-finasteride patient population, they have looked at the cerebral spinal fluid and blood levels of these neurosteroids. Um, and people who self-report this condition, they have altered levels from a you know, baseline general population control group who does not have post finasteride syndrome. The next question is how to prevent PFS before it starts. So PFS is an acronym for post finasteride syndrome and post finasteride syndrome is a persistent condition where someone has taken something like finasteride, reduced their DHT levels, and then they have dysfunction afterwards, whether that is cognitive dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, whatever it may be, depression, it could even be. Um, so it's, it's kind of a broad range and there is a, um, there's a continuum of how severe the symptoms are. So some people may have some mild side effects that resolve two weeks after stopping the medication. Other people may have side effects that have lasted for years. And as far as what actually leads to those changes, there are changes in neurosteroid levels. Um, you have steroids, neurosteroids that are dependent on the 5-alpha reductase enzyme that gets blocked with things like finasteride or dutasteride. Um, and this is mainly the conversion of progesterone into allopregnanolone that I'm thinking of. Um, and you see altered levels of even pregnenolone itself in the serum. You know, Pre-finasteride, someone starts finasteride, you're going to see the pregnenolone levels drop. Uh, and this is even a progesterone precursor. And pregnenolone is actually at the very top of the sex hormone cascade. So if you're looking at one of these diagrams, you can see that pregnenolone is at the very top there. When people supplement with pregnenolone orally, most of that does get converted to progesterone rather than DHEA. Uh, but interestingly, in the post-finasteride patient population, they have looked at the cerebral spinal fluid and blood levels of these neurosteroids. Um, and people who self-report this condition, they have altered levels from a you know, baseline general population control group who does not have post-finasteride syndrome. So there is something there. Um, and earlier this year, the FDA actually put a warning label or a, a notice on finasteride that they're maybe some association with suicidal behavior or suicidal ideation. So uh, I think it is good that this, um, these side effects are gaining some traction. Um, people are gonna be aware of it, you know, because there's lots of stories of people you know, taking this, not having a discussion of what the possible side effects are, and then experiencing those as a result. So what can you do before you start taking something like finasteride? Uh, you want to for sure look at your sex hormones. If someone has low or even a borderline low testosterone, uh, pushing androgens down further is probably not a good idea. It's probably going to be a better idea to see, you know, why are the androgens lower or talk about, okay, you, you know, you have a higher risk for developing you know, sexual side effects because we're pushing your total, your net androgens down even lower. Um, and some people, their, you know, their hair and hair loss is going to be more important to them than their sex life. And some people are going to be willing to, you know, lose their hair because they want to preserve a healthy libido or a level that they consider to be healthy.